Okay, so here is, I have an example that I like to solve. So the, the, the question gives a story. From that story, we should build our matrix form um, and then um, find the solution of the game. So here is the, so let me read the game, uh, the question. Uh, Ned and Ruth uh, love to play hide and seek. It's a simple game. Ruth hides upstairs or downstairs. Ned can look upstairs or downstairs, but not in both places. Okay, if he finds Ruth, Ned gets one scoop of ice cream and Ruth gets none. If he does not find Ruth, Ruth gets one scoop of ice cream and Ned gets none. Write down the payoff matrix of this game. The payoffs are measured in number of scoops of ice cream. Are there any Nash equilibria in pure strategies of this game? If so, what are they? Find the Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies for this game, etc. Okay, so once I read this game, I understand that there are two players, Ned and Ruth, right? Ned and Ruth. Um, so, and each player has two actions, right? Hiding upstairs, downstairs, I guess, and looking upstairs, downstairs. So I'm going to put Ned on as a, as a role player and Ruth as the um, a column player. All right, so, okay, so Ned is basically choosing the um, uh, rows and the Ruth is choosing the columns. Well, the Ruth uh, hides upstairs or downstairs, so up or down, okay. Ned can look upstairs or downstairs, upstairs and downstairs, okay. That's it. Um, if uh, Ned finds Ruth, so what does that mean? I mean, if you're looking upstairs and Ruth hide upstairs, well, you're going to find it. Otherwise, you're not going to find it. All right. So if he does, uh, if he finds Ruth, meaning upstairs, upstairs means finding. That's what I understand. Um, it doesn't really say anything else. And downstairs, downstairs means um, you find it, but if somebody goes to downstairs, the other goes to upstairs, you're not going to find it. Uh, you're not going to find the Ned is not going to find Ruth. That's, or if, if Ned goes upstairs, but the Ruth was hiding in downstairs, um, uh, uh, he's not going to find her. All right. So that's what I understand from the question. That's what you should understand from the question. So, uh, if he finds Ruth, uh, Ned gets one scoop and, and Ruth gets none. So one, zero, one, zero. If he does not find Ruth, uh, Ruth gets one scoop of ice cream and Ned gets none. So it's one, zero, um, zero, one, zero, one. Okay, so that's the game. Well, that's it. Um, here's the payoff matrix. In those kind of questions, uh, this is the most important part. All right. If, 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 you, if you come up with a wrong payoff matrix, obviously all your solutions will be wrong. Nevertheless, as an instructor, um, I do ask questions like this. My tendency is, even though your payoff matrix is wrong, I look at your solutions, uh, the following, so for example, find the Nash equilibrium, find the mixed strategy. So if your solution afterwards is correct, you may get partial credit. You may. Okay. Well, obviously, like if you if you give me some weird game where there's no equilibrium, there's no such thing. Obviously, um, so the, 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 um, grading such questions is is harder. Okay. But what I'm trying to say is is that so yes, spend some time to figure out the correct payoffs. But don't worry, even if those payoffs are wrong. The rest of your solution is going to bring you significant partial credits. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so here finding next uh, Nash equilibrium in pure strategies. First off, is there any dominant strategy for any player? Um, U is sometimes better than D, but sometimes worse. So for Ned, there's no dominant strategy. And same for Ruth. Sometimes D is better, sometimes U is better. So therefore, there is no dominant strategy. Well, the Nash equilibria, if Ned chooses upstairs, the best response for Ruth is high downstairs. Uh, otherwise, if Ned, um, you know, looks downstairs, well, the best thing for Ruth is to hide uh, upstairs. 
I mean, forget about upstairs, downstairs um, from that moment on. It's like, just look at the UD, right? So these are the actions. And if Ruth chooses U, the best response is U for Ned. And if Ruth chooses D, the best response is, is D for uh, Ned. So you know what? I never uh, underlined both numbers. That means there is no uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium in this game. Okay? Um, well, fine. There's no pure strategy Nash. That's not a problem. Uh, no Nash. Well, you should definitely write that. No Nash in pure strategies. So therefore, I have to find the mixed strategies. How do I do that? Well, as usual, put P probability here, Q probability here. Obviously, because there are two actions, this is going to be 1 minus P probability. This is going to be 1 minus Q probability. And then finally, uh, not finally, I'm sorry, uh, calculate the expected payoff of Ned if he happens to choose U, given that her opponent, his opponent is choosing uh, up with probability Q. All right. And then I'm going to calculate the Ned's expected payoff of playing D instead. And then I will calculate expected payoff of Ruth of playing U, given that her opponent is choosing uh, um, up with P probability. And finally, I'm going to calculate Ruth expected payoff of uh, D, given that her opponent is playing uh, up with P probability. So what are those expected payoffs? So the net, he's choosing up. So this is the uh, row that I should concentrate. So ignore this row. The payoff he's going to get is either 1 or 0. So he's going to get 1 only if his opponent chooses up, which happens with Q probability. You can ignore 0 because it's going to be probability times 0. So therefore, his expected payoff is 1 times Q. So it's just Q. Well, what if he chooses uh, D? Well, this time he's going to get 1 payoff only if uh, his opponent is choosing uh, D, which happens 1 minus Q probability. So 1 minus Q times 1, okay? Plus 0 times Q, it's just 0, so I ignore. Well, what about Ruth? Uh, the Ruth has, um, she is, if she's choosing up, so I'm calculating this, so I'm going to concentrate on this column, but I'm looking at the second numbers. So she's going to get 0, which, so I can ignore that. So she's going to get 1 only if her opponent chooses D, which happens with 1 minus P probability. So this is 1 minus P. And therefore, this is uh, not, not therefore, but this is with P probability. Um, so she's getting uh, 1. So 1 times P plus 0 times 1 minus P. So it's just P. Um, well, um, let's, let's calculate the uh, best responses. Sure. What happens is that um, so here, be careful. So these two numbers are equal to each other, right? So if Q is equal to one half, if Q is greater than one half, uh, up is, is, is more profitable. I mean, uh, it gives a higher payoff. And if Q is less than one half, it gives, D gives higher payoff, right? I mean, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, again, once again, Q equals one minus Q. Q equals 1 minus Q, so it means 2Q equals 1, hence Q equals 1 half. So if Q is 1 half, these are going to give you the same payoff. However, if Q is greater than 1 half, so imagine, for example, Q is 1, all right? So it's, it's higher than 1 half. So if, the, if Q is 1, your payoff of playing up is, and the Ned's payoff of playing up will be 1. And the net payoff of playing down is 0, 1 minus 1. So therefore, this is more profitable than this. And if Q is less than 1 half, D is a better response. All right, so that means, so Q is greater than 1 half. If Q is greater than 1 half, uh, for Ned, U is a better response. Remember, Ned plays U with probability P. So Playing U is a better response, meaning it's going to give you higher probability. I'm sorry, it's going to give you higher expected payoff. So you should never choose D. I mean, the probability of choosing D should be zero, which could happen only if P is one, right? So the, the optimal strategy, therefore, 
is to p equals 1. If q is 1 half, you're indifferent, so any p between 0 and 1 is the best response. And if q is less than 1 half, it means the opposite of this, is like p equals 0 must be best response. All right? So that's, that's it, by the way, for NED. Um, obviously, it takes a shorter time for me because I've done this trillions of times, I guess. Uh, but it could be slower for you, which is fine. Go slower. Uh, you know, think about every step that you, you, you take. But that's sort of the final outcome, the conclusion you should reach. Well, here again, if these two guys are equal to each other, which happens only if p is equal to one half, you're going to be indifferent between... Uh, I mean, the root is going to be indifferent between up and down. That means, remember, q is the probability that root goes up. So therefore, q, any q between 0 and 1 is, a, uh, is optimal. Um, well, if p is less than 1 half, 1 minus p is going to be greater than p. Okay, so be careful about this. For example, p equals 0. Always check the extreme cases. P equals zero satisfies this condition. It's less than one half. Uh, well, when P is zero, this is going to bring you pair of one. This is going to bring you pair of zero. So U is a better strategy, which means remember P uh, playing U with probability Q. So you should be choosing Q equals one. And if P is therefore greater than one half, um, you, should, you should choose the opposite, meaning you should play D rather than uh, you. So these are the best responses. And then, well, I think you figured that out. It's like the one half, one half is going to be the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of this game. Um, but nevertheless, um, it's always part of the question, um, usually. So let's put P on the horizontal axis, Q on the vertical axis. Remember, these are probabilities, 0, 1, 0, 1. Oops, okay. So 1 half Q equals 1 half was a threshold. P equals 1 half is also a threshold. So I'm going to draw the NEDs expect, uh, I'm sorry, best response first. So if Q is greater than, so if Q is greater than 1 half, the P value is going to be 1. All right, so therefore this. When Q is equal to 1 half indifferent, so any P is optimal. When Q is less than 1, P equals 0 is optimal. All right, so that's what the best response. BR means best response for NED. So the best response for NED, this is what it should look like. And for Ruth, uh, if P is less than 1 half in this region, Q must... So by the way, when P is equal to 1 half, all the Qs are best response. So therefore, this intersection point is the Nash that we were looking for. Um, so when P is less than one half, Q must be one. And when P is greater than one half, Q must be zero. So there is no other point of intersection except this. So therefore, the unique, the only Nash equilibrium is Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies. Basically, they play uh, with equal probabilities uh, up and down. All right. Um, so this is how we solve the game. I hope that was clear.